Hello, this is um, this is kind of what happens post-production. We put it all through the mixing desk, and the reason I'm explaining this to you is um, I'm going to be doing a voiceover throughout this video because uh, I've got a cold. Of all the things you can catch in the UK at the moment, I've just got a common cold, and normally I wear a little uh, head mic uh, around my head. But... Um, I'm just sniffling all the time, and so it would make the uh, video just unbearable to listen to, uh, as I'm sure you'd understand. So um, I'm just going to be dropping in some uh, little comments here and there about this uh, TV repair. So it's not going to be a full-on commentary, but it, 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 it'll be okay. And I'm trying not to sneeze and sniffle, and I'm sorry that I sound blocked up. I was fine a few hours ago. Um, this came on this afternoon and I'm just finishing off the editing here and um, I picked up uh, the sniffles and a cold today. But as I say, there, there are much worse things you can pick up, but that's just the reason why you're not going to get a full commentary on this one. It's um, it's an old TV we're going to fix on this particular one, but it's a, it's a nice one, so thanks for watching. So thanks for watching. I thought also to drown out the fact that um, I'm going to be sniffling a bit throughout this because the microphones and the cameras would have picked up all the um, extra noise. We'll play a little bit of music in the background too. So this is the TV we've got. It's a Bush 32 inch. I quite like these TVs. And look, it's got an original remote control apart from a bit of dust. This remote control, which has got to be 12 years old, well, 12 to 15, is, um, is mint just missing its batteries which is possibly why I can't get a standby light at the moment um, I'm sure you've just seen the model number it's just a standard Vestel 32 inch and it's dead so uh, what I'm gonna do since there are no batteries in the remote I'm just gonna try and switch it on by the um, little toggle switch which is hidden at the back there's a, um, a little bit on the main board at the back and you can toggle it and hopefully bring it on Oh, camera angle showing Misty the cat here. Oh, the other thing I'm doing, I'm just um, organising some of the other cameras. There must be little gremlins in this workshop when I go away, because the cameras get moved. And this camera was moved about three or four foot out of the way. I'll blame the cat. Uh, so this TV was going in the skip, apparently, so I managed to... Um, uh, pick it up. I donated £10 because I quite like these TVs. They may be 12 years old, but they're HD ready. And if you use the HDMI sockets on the back, which are in great condition on these, they give a good HD picture, they really do. So I'm looking for a standby light just to see, but I was told that it was dead. But do you know what? Every time a customer brings a TV, they always say, oh, it's dead. It's just not coming on. And sometimes, of course, as you've seen in previous videos, it's not the fact that they're dead. Uh, sometimes it's the backlights. But on this, I've plugged in and I've given it a test here and there, and it is dead. It's um, showing no standby light whatsoever. So if you've watched some of the videos before, in the past, you'll possibly know already that this could be one or two things. Uh, the customers normally say, um, I've checked the fuse, still not coming on, replaced the fuse, or the fuse is fine, etc. It never, it, well, sometimes it's the fuse. Actually, if it's the fuse, it can be a real pain if it's the fuse because if the fuse blows, it blows for a reason. And it normally on these, the power board inside these, when they go pop, they really go pop. It takes out the, um, the varista, it takes out the fuse, it takes out a FET, and maybe some bits on the other side of the power board. And to get a replacement power board for this and to get the parts, it's not cheap. I've seen some power boards on eBay go north of £50 for this particular model. Why? I don't know. I suppose they're becoming a bit rare and scarce. So I'm hoping when we do take the back off this by removing the screws that I don't... Um, I don't see black marks around the fuse and the varista because if that's the case, it's... It's, it's fiddly and organising a load of parts. I'm rather hoping it could be the secondary thing which we've um, we've sorted out on a, on a few occasions, which is just the um, just the diodes. There are diodes that are in a parallel mode on the power board. 
and one of them just burns out. And if one of them is burnt out and shorts, then the rest of them read short and won't bring the TV on. So anyway, we'll have a look in a second. Let's take out the screws, take off the back and have a look. Once again, I send my apologies if you hear me um, cough, splutter and sneeze a couple of times throughout this. Yeah. Not a pleasant thing to hear. But hopefully the music is, de um, is, is hiding that, disguising that. That's the word I was looking for. Not a great amount of screws to keep this particular one in. Usually about uh, eight or ten, something like that. Not forgetting a couple of screws around the Scott and HDMI area, which are slightly smaller. This was one of Vestel's entry level models into the um, edge lit LED technology. It's not backlit, this, this is going to be an edge lit one. And the edge lit ones from this era, they never go blue. They will fail after time, but when I say after time, after a good time, normally after. Um, well, as I say, this is 12 years old, and the backlights are going to be fine in this. Wish the backlights were just like that these days. Actually, no, I don't. If the backlights were as good as the backlights or edge lights, edge lights in this particular model, I'd never make any money, would I? So the back's off. I've just got to unplug the power lead from the power board, and then we can take this off. So closer inspection of the boards, you can see the main board on the right hand side with the two HDMIs and the SCART socket. SCART socket becoming a bit um, a bit obsolete these days. Uh, that's the varistor I was talking about, there's the fuse which is next to it on the left hand side here. Um, normally if there's a black mark around there you'll know that that's gone pop, but no black mark so hopefully we're looking at uh, these three things here. Those three things being the three diodes which normally go uh, on the Vestel sets and on this power board. Sometimes they go within a couple of years. So again, you know, the fact that this TV has managed to get 12 to 15 years. I didn't check the date on the original when I did a zoom in earlier, but I'm, I'm guessing this TV is going to be from oh, 2011, maybe a bit earlier. I'm going to fade the music down a second and fade my voice out just so we can um, uh, listen to the um, multimeter here to see if they're reading a bit short. So I'm sure, as you can tell, all three diodes reading uh, short, but as we mentioned earlier, it won't be all three. There'll just be one of them. We'll test them all individually in just a moment and see which ones have gone. If this happens to you, and possibly why you're watching this video is because something has happened to you, just be very careful because I did plug the TV in, and if you've plugged your TV in within a couple of hours of working on it, the main filter caps, even though the diodes have blown, the power board is not completely dead. Um, the first main part of the power board that has the AC voltage, um, which we call the primary, uh, will have a charge in the capacitors. And you'll notice the way, in a moment, the way I'm handling the power board, 
Uh, even though I know it's discharged, because I have discharged the main filter cabs, because they can hold up to a good 350 to 450 volts, depending on um, which particular set it's powering. But they can hold a charge, so I always still, even though I know this power board is completely dead, you just get into the habit of handling it at the sides. And it's the same with the main board too, even though there's no voltage on the main board. If ever I'm taking that out, you handle it on the sides, just quite simply because you don't want to get any static electricity. Anyway, that's the reason why you saw me handling it quite carefully. I hope you like blues music, by the way, because it's the only thing that I can find that possibly won't get me told off. And if I do get told off, the only thing that Amazon... Amazon? Who, what have they got to do with this? The only thing that um, YouTube will do will demonetize the video. Well, I don't make any money from... And I don't want to make any money from making these videos. It's just a bit of fun and hopefully helping somebody out. Um, uh, but at the same time, I don't want to be playing anything to get anybody else into trouble. So a little bit of instrumental blues is the trick. Anyway, uh, so now what we're going to do, we're going to um, unsolder these three diodes here. And well, I've got replacement diodes, there you go, as you can see there's, um, there's a string of them here that I've possibly had for about five or six years. Tend to order them by their hundreds, or if not thousands probably, when I first started doing this game. We don't get so many jobs in for diodes these days, not on new sets. I haven't anyway, if you work on new sets do let me know. And I'm bringing out Old Faithful. Just a quick reminder for those people that are possibly just watching this video because it's their TV set which has gone funny and they've got a bush TV and it's died and you'll want to know how to fix it. I'm doing this from my home workshop. We have a main workshop which has got all the all the um, greatest tools in the world. Uh, but in the, in the home workshop, as you can tell, look at this solder wick. This is the only solder wick that I have. It's just a horrible stringy piece, but it'll get me through this particular board. I must go to the main workshop, or I must order some more solder wick uh, for this little workshop at home. I, would, I don't have cameras in the main workshop, because if I had cameras in the main workshop, I'd be stopping every 20 minutes to edit and do some bits. Anyway, these are the diodes I'm pointing at here. You can see they're the three. All I'm going to do is add a bit of... Uh, low melt solder some people call it or I think this is 60-30 so it's not technically low melt solder but it's uh, it's the leaded stuff which tends to easily melt than the uh, non leaded stuff so I'm just going to add it to these three diodes here at the points I've just got to clean the soldering iron because this soldering iron is filthy. But look, look at what happens. Just a wipe with a paper towel and it makes this shiny and new. It makes the tip look fantastic. I do love this soldering iron. It gets ridiculously hot though. This is, I think, a 60 watt tip on this. It may be higher. But I have got it plugged into a little adjuster so I can turn it down. And I think I've turned it down to half power on this one because it's a Vestel board. And uh, Vestel, by the way, for, again, I'll just repeat myself for those people that don't know. Vestel is a company in Turkey that make televisions on behalf of anybody that wants them. So even though this TV is stamped Bush, um, it's got no Bush parts in it whatsoever. You know, it could be stamped Panasonic, Toshiba, Hitachi, um, it, whatever you want it to be stamped with. So Vestel make these TVs on behalf of whomever wants them. So this one is marked up Bush at the moment, always stamped Bush. But it's got no Bush parts in it, they're all made by Vestel. That's not me knocking it, nothing wrong with Vestel TVs. They serve a purpose, they're cheap, they're cheerful. They last their warranty period, which is more than can be said for some. But of course the warranty period is only 12 months. You would expect your TV to last longer than 12 months, wouldn't you? Anyway, I'm poking the diodes out here. There you go. One's dropped out. I'm hoping the other two will drop out, but nah. I'm going to have to come at it with a soldering iron from the front. 
It's almost going out. As I mentioned earlier, it'll only be one of these three diodes that's gone faulty. I mean, I could put the other two in, but the rule of thumb is, and I don't know who thumb is, by the way, but his rule says that if you're replacing the diodes, replace all three. But we'll, we'll do a little test here, so I'll shut up and wait for the volume of the bleep, if that helps. That's the one. That's the culprit. The other two are reading just fine. Don't know. I, I'm just looking at the monitor here. I can't see what they're reading. So I think it was it was the middle one. Anyway, that's the one that's causing the problems, and so that's the one... Well, we'll throw all three away and we'll, we'll squeeze in um, a couple of new ones. Actually, we'd better squeeze in three new ones, hadn't we, really? Because uh, otherwise a blooming TV won't work. Oh, actually, just to let you know that if you did manage to find out which diode had gone, and I think it was the middle one on this, we said, if you just chop the middle one out, then the TV will come back to life again. Probably won't last very long. I say very long. Sometimes I've chopped one out just to do a quick repair for a friend or something and it's lasted for years. But let's do things properly and let's, um, let's replace all three diodes on this TV. As I mentioned earlier, this TV was going to be thrown away, but I offered the chap £10 if I could have it. I don't know what the rule is when you go to a recycling centre. Because if you've ever gone to the recycling centre and seen somebody throwing something away and asked for it, apparently that's illegal. Because as soon as it's turned up at the recycling centre, it's the property of your council. I don't know how true this is. And you're supposed to leave it there, you're not supposed to take it away. But I said, oh, if the screen's fine, I'll give you a tenner for it. Only because I like working on these TVs and I think these TVs are great, the edge link ones, but anyway. I'm working at a slower pace because of the fact I'm not feeling terribly well and I'm actually I'm feeling fine, it's just a head cold. But when you've got a head the size of mine, ba bum, it just makes you work slower. So using that horrible solder wick, the little straggly piece that I've got left in this workshop. I'm just taking off all, all the old solder. Again, don't do this with a red hot iron on the Vestal boards that I was trying to explain earlier. Um, you know, they're made cheap for a reason. And sometimes you can lose the track and the trace if you, uh, if you use a red hot soldering iron. But I, I have turned this soldering iron down to about half power. And being the old pro that I am, um, again, look at me scrimping and scraving. This is uh, this is my um, my 100 percent or 99.9 percent .9 isopropyl alcohol, which is running out of the bottle. I've got a bigger bottle behind me in a cupboard, but there's a TV in front of the cupboard, and I just can't be bothered to open it. So I was just spraying the last remains of the alcohol. There we go, just to clean it up and make it look a bit better. Oh, 
Well, this music is making this video sound like I'm supposed to be some sort of 1950s detective. Hi, my name's Barn Barton. <laughs> if you live near, if you live in Devon, you'll understand Barn Barton. Anyway, diodes going in. Normally, I would make sure all three of these diodes are going very neatly. I'm a little bit OCD with lining them up and stuff, but not when you've got a head cold. I'm just chucking them in. But safely chucking them in. And you have to get the polarity right on these diodes. There's normally a little silver stripe at the top, um, which indicates which way they're supposed to go. And it, it is shown on the board, but you can't see the silver stripe on these diodes quite simply because I've had these diodes for so long. Uh, it's worn off, but it, if I, if you look closely, the silver stripe is there, kind of. So not lined up perfect, but um, good enough to make the connection. So just get the soldering iron back on again and solder them in. Oh, it looks like I'm trying. I'm trying to get them as lined up the best way I can, but there's no need to. No one's going to see this board when it's finished. But it just goes to prove that I care. I've just realised that I've got um, what I call the top camera on a, a low resolution, so you can't see much. But the little square bit in the in the bottom right hand corner that's on a high resolution. So hopefully that is showing you as much detail as you need to see. But you get the gist anyway. The reason I have to turn some cameras down to a low resolution is because when I've got all six cameras working and I've I've got all six cameras in use on this. So the all, all six cameras go through the processor at once. And I haven't got an expensive computer. And if I have them both at a high definition setting, it just, it's hellish and the computer crashes. So I have to turn a couple of the cameras down to a low resolution. It would have made sense, I suppose, having the um, the main camera on a high resolution and the little corner camera you can see in the screen on the bottom right-hand side there on the low resolution. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, there I go again. Look, just trying to level these up. I did say I wasn't going to bother, but obviously I must have thought, well, it's it's one of those things, I suppose, once you... Um, it doesn't make any, any, any problems whatsoever. It's, it's just trying to give it a neat and tidy finish. It's a bit like Delia is cooking, you know. It's all in the presentation. <laughs> I'm still fiddling around with these diodes to line them up. Stop it, you old tart, and get on with it. Final bit of cleaning, and that is it. The only important thing to remember if you're sticking these diodes in, just make sure you're sticking the right ones in. I mean, I know the fact that these are 100 volt, 5 amp Schottky diodes, but there's, there's going to be a number on them. It'll say something like 
LN5100, something like that. Um, just check the numbers of the diodes that you want to replace and make sure you're replacing like for like. There's plenty on eBay and they're dirt cheap. I think diodes cost something like, well, they should cost something like 5p each, but on eBay people put these repair kits together and they um, they tend to charge, I don't know, five or six quid for a, a repair kit of the three diodes. But I think also they put in, it's, it's good to get these repair kits because the guys that do put them together, um, I mean, obviously they'll have to make some money on it, that's why they're doing it, but they will they'll put a little bit of solder braid in and they'll also put some solder in, I think, the repair kit, so stops you having to go out and buy too much stuff when it's all there. So this video should hopefully show you how to um, put it all together. Power board going back in. Uh, if you're interested in the music that I'm playing, it's... Um, it's called Astonishing Ambience for Working. Uh, easy listening, instrumental blues, that's all I can tell you. I suppose I'd better give them a plug since I'm using their uh, music. Copyright 2021 Des Moines Vinyls. Well, that's it, I've done my bit now, haven't I? I've credited them, so they can't come and arrest me for using it. Available at all good record shops, including Woolworths, the co-op. Trying to think of any old record shops. Our price, that was one. I can't believe this video is... It's coming up to the 25... Is it 25 minutes? No, it's coming up to 28 minutes. Have I been talking for 28 minutes? I'll have a sore throat tomorrow. Right, so plugging the back lights in. Power board's gone in. All I'm going to do now is... Well, plug it in, I suppose. Find the mains lead and plug it in and see if we get the standby light flashing. Hopefully there are no other problems with this power board. <sighs> Just line up that camera with the, um, the red light of the TV. Or it may be a blue light. Yeah, I'm pointing there, that one. There you go. Just underneath where it says bush. Oh, the anticipation. I can't take it any longer. We've run out of blues music. No, jolly good. Oh, look at that. Surprise, surprise. And the backlights come on. Actually, they're not backlights, they're edge lights. Um, I'm not too sure if it's lit down the side of the screen or the bottom of the screen, the, um, the edge. I'm, I'm going to say the side of the screen on this one, but I could be wrong never usually wrong, no am I, let's be honest with you. No. Thank you. I heard that. So we've got a picture and it's back up and running. It's, it's always a bit nerve-wracking when you, you know, you get a TV, not necessarily from the dump, but you've bought one cheap. Got no idea, for all I know, the um, screen could have been smashed or had a little crack in it somewhere, but turns out that we're okay. So I'm just going to get my portable Blu-ray player, which you know which film's inside this Blu-ray player. <laughs> my all-time favourite. Oh, bless me, I just sneezed then. Covid. Shouldn't joke about it, there's so many people. As I'm recording this, this is the 6th of January. Oh, that's what I meant to tell you. Yeah, today's the 6th of January, or it may be the 7th now. And guess, as I'm doing the voiceover for this, guess what I'm cooking in the oven? 7th of January, something that you wouldn't cook for your supper. But I've got turkey. 
Oh, no. Anyway, I'm not joking about COVID because hundreds of thousands are suffering with it. Well, some aren't suffering. Some have got it and they're not feeling a thing. But they've got to isolate from the world for seven days. And some people have got it and they're feeling rotten. There's me moaning because I've just got a head cold. Right, I've just plugged something into HDMI 2, or I thought I did. Because I'm going to realise soon I'm not getting a picture, so I must have plugged it into HDMI 1. So we'll we'll do that again. Notice for safety reasons still, even though I know my way around the TV, but because I'm doing it... Um, at the back of the TV, I still switch the TV off just in case you touch one of those charge capacitors and make your hair stand up. So yeah, it's my favourite film. This um, my favourite movie, which is Last Christmas. I, ju I just use. I, I like it because the DVD comes on with this still of the two main actors in the um, in the movie. Have we run out of music? Oh no, we're getting more. And so it gives me a chance just to... Uh, the, the colours on this helps me kind of adjust the colours and the, um, the sharpness, etc. I want to test this remote that came with the TV because the remote that came with the TV is always in mint condition, but there's no batteries in that one at the moment, so I'm, I'm just going to see if a brand new Vestel remote... Yeah, it does. That's a new remote from... I say brand new. I've probably had it a couple of months from 2021. So that the Vestel haven't changed the codes. Still the same codes. So I'm going to take the batteries out of this new remote and just stick them in an old remote because I want to see if the old remote works. But I'm really impressed with the condition of this old remote. Whoever had this TV has looked after it, not let the dog chew it or the cats do what cats do on them. And it works fine. Always worth checking the picture settings here. Not too sure how much you can see, but I'm just going to go in and see what the settings are. I've noticed the backlights are on high. High, as you can see. So I'm turning it down to medium because I want to give this TV every chance to live for a few more years. I haven't done many videos of the edge-lit TVs. Uh, in my little workshop. We do plenty of them in the main workshop. They're okay to do and certain TV, Vestel TVs are great with the edge lit, very easy to do. There are some Samsung curved ones that are a pain in the backside. In fact, we're now not doing them because it burns the uh, plastic inside. Well, I'll save that for another video. That's it, it's, it's all sorted. The picture quality is, again, really impressive. Vestel's high definition picture quality is very good. And so is their 4K. And then it's an old TV, but it's it's up and running. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening to the blues. And I hope that this has helped you if you've got a Vestel TV with a problem. Thanks for watching. We'll do another one again.